Hey guys, here's the uh, DIY cable railing I just did from my little outside workshop uh, with one and a half inch steel tubing welded together and then uh, eighth inch cable and different cable connectors. I've been a really cool one I'll show you called the dead end. Um, so I uh, did it for probably a third of what it would cost to have this done or be able to, to buy these uh, I looked at posts online and they were over a hundred dollars for each post and I only spent a hundred dollars for all the steel in this thing. So uh, I'll show you some of the things I did to put this together. And you might be wondering, why would I do a really nice little deck on my workshop? Well, because this is the view from my workshop. Here's the one and a half inch 16 gauge square tubing that I'm using for the uh, for the posts and for the railing for my project. Um, I've, this is a end piece. It's uh, going to be at the bottom of the stairs. I've mounted a little bracket on it of uh, steel to uh, mount into the concrete. And I used a little template that I made out of just a yardstick with holes punched every three and a half inch inches. And uh, that way I can mark the holes where the holes are supposed to be. And then I uh, drilling with my little drill press little bench top drill press where i've made a little jig to make sure that i stay right in the center of the uh, post and just one thing to notice for these end posts because they're going to be on an angle if you notice the hole is drilled i drilled holes on one side and then moved up half an inch and then drilled the holes on the other side so that way i have this angle this uh, about a 35 degree angle and another thing that I did that makes it a little easier to uh, get the uh, the little uh, connectors in is I kind of reamed out these these holes. Uh, took my drill bit and a hand drill and just kind of kind of angled them because I drilled them straight in, and then I angled them, just kind of worked it out so that uh, the uh, connectors would go in smoothly. And here's the saw. It's a metal cutoff saw that I'm used to to cut this uh, tubing. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut a 35 degree angle on this uh, piece right here for the top railing. Now to clean up the metal, I'm using the uh, angle grinder with a flat disc. I'm going to clean it all up where I'm going to be welding it. So I'm not going to try to video this with one hand. So I'm going to put on my uh, gloves and my eye protection and go ahead and do this. Okay, I got my pieces of metal ready and cleaned up. And got my little wire feed welder and my welding gear. So I'm ready to spot weld this thing up and just see if it fits i do want to talk about this uh, top rail and how it's got the two end posts and then these two middle posts and this top rail is one continuous piece of uh, one and a half inch square tubing and i've mocked it up here on my shop floor and basically what i do is i have these middle uh, posts they go under and connect into the uh, top rail they're welded there and there and then the end post, the top rail butts against them. So whenever you put, and that's on both ends. So whenever you put uh, tension on this cables, it's pulling all that together and the top rail and then these middle rails that go between here are all compressed. And basically it's steel compressing steel. It's not really putting any uh, stress on those joints. I didn't want those joints popping apart. And you're probably wondering what I did with the top here. These. Uh, posts I found these little uh, plastic uh, insets and they just pop right in there you just take them and take a rubber hammer and pop them right in and they look really good in fact you probably couldn't even tell that they were in there and uh, of course I'll show you uh, where I got all this stuff too so if you're doing a cable rail like I am out of one and a half inch square tubing you might come across a situation where you need to mount the cable rail to a wall and you're wondering what kind of uh, connectors am I going to use? 
but I'll show you what I did. I think it was pretty cool and uh, something I found. All right, this little connector here is called a dead end. And this is what's gonna go inside that square tube. And uh, you only have to have the connector on one side. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put my wire into it. And uh, of course, it's always a pain. I'll put it all the way in. Until it just about comes out the other end. Then I'm gonna swage it with my swaging tool here. There we go. And it's stuck. Now once you swage it, you kind of bend the cable like this. Okay. And then we'll go fit it into one of the holes. And these have to be a little bit bigger than a quarter inch. So usually I think I found about five eighths inches just about right. So it goes in one end, and it kind of goes sideways, and now it's in there good and tight. Now what I'll do is cut it and fit on a, put a fitting on the other end. Okay, here's the uh, free set of wire cutters I got with the spool of wire, but uh, I'll tell you, this is the most useless tool on the planet. So to cut, and it's gonna be a little hard to do this one hand, well, I'll show you. I just take my trusty uh, bolt cutters and give it a whack, and there you go. And it gets a much cleaner cut because those uh, those wire cutters were really fraying ends and make it really hard to put into the ferrules. Okay, I've swaged that other end. Basically, put the uh, wire into it. Swaged it with my swaging tool. I'm gonna put him in here and running through and then i'll put nuts and bolts on this other end the outside edge and he'll be done all right i got all the wires in and they're just finger tighten now see they're they're not very tight uh probably what i'll do is once i finish i'll put some uh, black silicone caulk in these holes uh, just to uh, keep any water intrusion out what i need to do now is to tighten these guys up and then i'll cut off the ends of these bolts and put on the cap uh, when I'm tightening, I'm going to go inside and then working my way outside. Kind of like putting the lug nuts on a tire. That may be the wrong way to do it. And if it is, there's the danger of a rip in the time space continuum, but uh, that's the chance I'm going to take. All right, so I've added an extra nut down here on this one on the bottom, you can see. And that is so that when I cut off this bolt, I won't jack up my, my threads. And uh, I'm going to use my trusty Dremel. It's about 20 years old. It's probably the tool I use the most and it's beating the hell and uh, but it still works. So go ahead and cut this thing off and then I'll put on the show what I'm gonna do then. All right, I had to stop filming because I couldn't film with one hand and cut with the other, so. I'm going to take this nut off now. And man, it is hot. And by doing that, I kept from messing up my threads. And now this uh, acorn nut, go right on and give it a nice finished look. Okay, we've got the uh, main part of the railing done. And we've got the uh, ferrules on that end. And then on this newel post right here at the stairs, we've got all these wires are going into deadheads into the uh, post on one side. And the other side, we're gonna put deadheads. And I'll show you, here's a deadhead I'm fixing to put in there. And then uh, gonna have barrels down there with kind of an uh, angled washer at the bottom. And I'll show you how we do that. So we're gonna go ahead and put this guy in here. And basically what you do is you just put him in the hole it has to be bigger than a quarter inch. He goes in, and the little dead head swings to like a T, and then he is in there good. He ain't coming out. Okay, here's what the end is supposed to look like on the end of a of a uh, staircase. And you notice that we got the spacer 
washer nut and then the acorn nut, but I cut one of these a little too short and I didn't have room to put a nut in the acorn nut and I thought, you know, I actually like the look of that a lot better. So I'm going to actually cut the rest of these shorter and just have the spacer and the nut because it's my shop and I can do whatever I want. Other than the one and a half inch square 16 gauge tubing that I bought from a local steel distributor, all the other uh, connectors I bought on Amazon, and I'll put links in there too for this. The first is this uh, dead end, and I also call it a dead head somewhere in the video. And it's this cable railing connector that goes in one side and then doesn't have to have a hole on the other side. And uh, these, what I will say is make sure you get extras on these things because you're going to crimp one wrong or it's going to come off and you have to redo it. So make sure that you get a couple extras on all these kind of things. Uh, this is the uh, other connector for the other end, and this is the adjustable connector that you goes all the way through the uh, posts. And I will say in the corner post, make sure that you uh, you cut your holes staggered so you have them at least a uh, quarter inch off center, so you're not you don't have them trying to cross right in the middle if you're going to have a post with uh, cables going both ways. Now this is the cable, they sell stainless steel cable, they also sell uh, cable that's that's plated. Make sure you get the stainless steel cable. Uh, I recommend the seven by seven strand. The more strands it is, the uh, less it's gonna stretch. And uh, the uh, make sure, you, I would go with the eighth inch. And when you get the cable, make sure that you got the connectors that match the cable because there's two different sizes of cable. Uh, I would highly recommend a uh, hydraulic crimper. Uh, some people try to use a pair of dikes to uh, to crimp these connectors, and this thing just made everything go so much smoother and look so much more professional. It's only about 40 bucks, and you know, who knows, you might find a use for it later. And this is the little uh, plastic ends that go uh, in the ends of the uh, square tubing uh, at the tops of the corner posts. At the bottom of the post, so you know, scorpions and bees don't get in there, and at the ends of the handrail. So these basically just whack them in with a uh, rubber mallet. They fit really good. And then the uh, bevel washers. This is for the uh, bottom of the stairs where the cable is going down at an angle. I guess you could use it at the top of the stairs too if you've got a, that kind of connector at the end. It just makes it where the connector can pull flat against it and. Uh, not be angled against the uh, the post itself. And that's it. And uh, just hope you enjoy the video.